Let's see what's happening for this here Wednesday morning. Uh, try to give you all the information that we can, and uh, this time we're going to be talking about water. Uh, National Irrigation Commission and uh, what they have been doing. I don't know if you remember hearing about uh, a pumping station that they created in St. Elizabeth. Um, this was in December, and um, it's it's taking on a life of its own, and we want to hear a little bit more about it. So we're going to be talking to uh, Mr. Emil Myers, energy engineer at the National Irrigation Commission in the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. Myers. Uh, good morning, Francois. Thank you for having me on the program. It is certainly a pleasure because we want to hear more about this uh, pumping station, which is uh, a solar-powered pumping station. Um, can you tell us uh, how this came to be and how it's going? All right. Well, let me just give you a little bit of an overview about the NIC so we can paint a picture um, sure. going up to why we did what we did. Sure. So irrigation, of course, is critical in agriculture. Mm-hmm. Nothing really grows without water. Now, the NIC operates eight irrigation schemes, and we provide irrigation services to approximately 8,500 hectares of farmland, as well as drainage services in the upper Black, um, Black River Morass. Mm-hmm. And we produce water from surface and groundwater sources. Now, Surface is really from rivers, and it is cheaper to produce from an energy standpoint because we don't need to pump it. However, the supply coming from those sources are seasonal and most times unreliable um, when we really need those irrigation or that water um, source. So in the dry times when irrigation demand peaks, generally um, our river sources are dry. Now, in terms, in the times of past, we used, um, we would have pumped, 40% of our overall production and gotten the remaining 60% from surface flows. Mm-hmm. However, due to issues with climate change, we are seeing lower production coming out of our surface flows. And so now we are pumping more of our total production. And so to mitigate an energy risk, the NIC has looked at renewable energy as a strategic move to re- reduce our um, pumping costs as well as to reduce any environmental, any negative environmental impact from our operation. So now, looking at the uh, Little Park F3 pump station, that is one of three pump stations in the Beacon Little Park irrigation scheme, and that is located just north of Treasure Beach in South St. Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. So we serve 390 farmers on 470 hectares of land there, and that pump station is the single largest energy user within the NIC or within the, the public irrigation system locally. So we would have looked at um, renewable energy. Um, we have incorporated, we now have a 200 kilowatt system there. And that produces just about 37% of the total energy requirement needed to operate that pump station. Okay. Um, let, let me ask you, so this pump station, it, it, it supplies not necessarily the entire area, but the farmers in the area, is that correct? Correct. So it's the farmers in the area. Um, by our mandate, we provide irrigation services. The water is non-potable. Ah, but, um, you're, so you're, provide- you're ahead of me. That was my, <laughs> my next question, was is this treated water or is it water specifically for farming? No, this is water specifically for farming. Okay. Water. That's quite interesting. And you are entirely solar powered or partly? Well, at this time, we are, we are offsetting about 37% of our energy production. We pump for 21 hours a day. So you would imagine, Francois, um, we have eight hours of sunlight. Mm-hmm. So we would pr- be producing water also in the nighttime. Um, so far, this system is grid tied, not operating on batteries. So um, during the off, oh. off, outside of sun hours, I should say, we rely on the grid to provide the energy that we need to pump. I see. You know, you have some folks just up the hill with some windmills right there near you. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. You, you, you should have a chat with them as well. Um, but this is quite interesting um, because it has been a problem in South St. Elizabeth for some time to get consistent uh, water supply. Um, are there more developments to come from, from the uh, pumping station well, or expansions? This, what I would say from this particular pump station, yes, we will be expanding the system up to 350 kilowatts. And um, that we expect to complete by December of this year, December of 2022. And by this time, we would expect to generate, now we're generating 30 37%, sorry. We expect to generate just about 60% of our own energy requirements for water production for that particular station. Um, mm -hmm. We also will be looking at including solar systems at the other two pump stations within the next two financial years also. Okay, you 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 allow tours. Anybody can can get a tour. You know, well, yes, you know what we, I'm hinting, don't you? <laughs> well, Franzo, I'll say that you know, as a part of the the government's national energy policy, government agencies are asked to be leaders in the sector, and so we consider ourselves a leader at this time within the water sector. And so we are open, we are open to doing tours, we are open to dialogue both with farmers and others in the industry to show what the technology has done and what it also can do. I'll take that as a yes, Mr. Myers, and I'll take you up on it. Uh, thank you very much for coming and sharing this very interesting bit of information with us. Mr. Emil Myers, Energy Engineer at the National Irrigation Commission. I guess I'll see you soon. All right, thanks again, Francois. All right, that's the NEC's operations supporting agricultural and industrial users across the region. Um, so uh, you can uh, look out to hear more. Don't forget to follow the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries on Facebook at Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries and uh, check them out on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, this has been Agro.